Good evening. Today is Monday, September 13, 2021. It is currently 7.01 p.m. And I would like to call to order the Cascade Charter Township Planning Commission meeting. Uh, at this time, all members are present with the exception of member Rappin and member Katzma, which are both excused this evening. And uh, with that, we will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Uh, at this time, we'll go to Article 3, which is to approve the current agenda. So move. Support. Thank you, Member Moxley, for the motion and uh, Member Deering for the support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to Article 4. Does anyone have any uh, conflict of interest to disclose at this time? I'm just hoping one of these days that, you know, something comes up. <laughs> uh, Article 5, approve the minutes of the August 16, 2021 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Member Deering. Support. Thank you for the support, Member Nordyk. All those in favor, in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 6, this time is for... Uh, we acknowledge visitors and those wishing to speak for items that are not slated for public hearing. Um, at, we have two items on the agenda slated. Well, it doesn't say public hearing on the agenda. It typically would. Um, sure. yep, but both, uh, both cases before us this evening, we will have a special time to talk about those. Uh, but if you'd like to speak about something else, uh, anything, uh, you're limited to five minutes if you wanted to ap approach uh, the podium or connect to us electronically. Uh, if you're on the telephone by pressing star nine or raising your hand electronically and our uh, lovely assistant manager will connect you if that's uh, your desire. Do we have any takers this evening? There are no raised hands, Mr. Chairman. Excellent, I'm moving right along. I'm sure there's probably thousands of people watching. Uh, <laughs> so with that, Brian, we'll go to Article 7, case number 21-3659. Uh, I'm going to pronounce that Lang. I could be wrong. 9205 28th Street. Yeah, so we have a couple of Type 1 special use permits on the agenda tonight for accessory buildings. Uh, the first one here is located off of 28th Street, um, a little west of Snow Avenue. Uh, the applicants propose an accessory building, which would be 40 by 30 feet, with also a 40 by 10 foot lean-to, so a total square footage of 1,600 square feet, of a total height of 13 and a half feet measured to the midpoint of the roof. And that requires a setback of 10, to the, 10 feet to the side property line, 25 feet to the rear. So they're showing a setback of over 200 feet to the near side property line and a setback of 30 feet to the rear. So they're meeting those requirements there. Uh, the property is permitted to have two accessory buildings, and this will be the second building on it. The applicants indicated they plan to use the building for storage of vehicles and lawn equipment. Um, they indicated the building will have painted steel roofing and siding, which is not unusual for the agriculturally zoned areas of the township. Uh, and so the size of the building, I'd say is normal for the lot size and zoning district that it's in. Uh, so with that, the applicant appears to meet our standards for an accessory building. Um, so I'm recommending approval of the special use permit with the two following conditions, along with being in compliance with all other zoning regulations that the building is not used for living space or to run a business, and that any outdoor lighting meets our regulations. Thank you. Any questions of staff at this time? All right. Does the applicant have anything to add? Uh, I read the report. I'm David Wright. Why don't you just step up and, okay. and uh, state your name and address for the record, because the person who does these minutes uh, Listen okay. to a recording. They're not My name is David here. K. Lang, um, address 9205 28th. I'm the applicant. And uh, my wife and I, moved, uh, she moved in in July. We got married in October. We moved in. Right now, our garage is filled with stuff you need to take care of the property and everything. And I said, I'd really like to put one up. It's going to be completely hidden from all the neighbors because we do have 3.4 
3.43 acres. I said three and a half, I don't <laughs> exaggerate. And uh, it's surrounded by woods. I'll be well set back. I did notice the, uh, uh, on the report, uh, the lighting and uh, rest assured, I'm, all I'm gonna do is put spotlights on the ground and it will be timed, you know, a motion sensor. So there will not be light pollution besides my grandsons like it, that we have more stars than anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, no, I'm not, not planning to run a business. I'm getting close to retirement. I'm not gonna start one now. And my wife, my wife heard that, she's really thrilled. Um, and um, okay, so there's nothing more to add. Uh, okay, I don't plan on sleeping all. in there yeah. unless I get in trouble with my wife. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions of the applicant before he takes a seat? I think we're good. No. Oh, I have one question. Uh, and this is not in any conflict to your septic system, correct? No, uh, that would be about 140 feet away from it. Understood. It's 84. The front of the building will be 84 feet from the house. Okay. And uh, it's on the south side of the house. Yep, the, I saw that. The septic system's well on the north side of the house. Understood. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I would uh, entertain a motion to go to public hearing. Move. Thank you, Member Moxley. Support. Thank you, Member Deering, for the support. All in favor to go to public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. If any member of the public wishes to speak on this matter, now would be the time. Uh, if you're connecting to us electronically, again, press star nine if you're on the telephone or uh, raise your hand on your computer if you're via Zoom. There are no raised hands. Thank you. All right. I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Support. All right. I've got uh, support. support by Member Norreich and uh, su support by Member Moxley. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We're not back in regular session. Any uh, discussion or action on this item? Make a motion to approve. No. And that's one question. I am, in spite of being an experienced orienteer and still refuse to use a computer mapping system, I'm trying to figure out where this building is going to be on this site. Um, can I share my screen? Green or is that not? I can. I just the person who can explain that doesn't hear probably. I'm looking at uh, the. Can you? Oh. Oh, actually, yeah, you've got it up there. On this one, the whole. Down, there's like another sketch. That might be an easier one for. For us poor people. Well, we just that's as easy. We'll just draw it in. This one shows the property a little better. Right. The road. Right. The yellow one. And the accessory building across on the right. Where it says shed in a diamond right now on. Yeah. Is it? There you go. Yeah. It's kind of in that vicinity. There's a small shed existing just to the south of the home, and then this proposed accessory building will be further to the south. Further to the south of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe by the turnaround. It's yeah, to the little south of the south of the, turnaround. South of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it is set back from the property line on the east by how far? 30 feet to that property line. And there, there is no other house? There's no house near on that side, no. Not near that side, no. It's a little ways away. Okay. In fact. Go ahead. There, there is no house to the east east of that location, Member Merlin. In fact, if you were to measure from approximately where that building would be, 
uh, you would hit water at 670 feet to the east. Like a pond or a lake. But somebody way. owns that property. They do. Their house is actually at the end of the street, which would actually be to the northwest of the building. Um, their, their house is from this building location. It's to the north, isn't it? It is to the northwest. And the front of that they house very is, large it's over 700 feet away. Okay. The, the, the neighboring parcel is quite One, large. It's uh, 70, before? 73 acres. Yeah. What's that? Okay. Yeah. No, it, and it, then it goes on to the river, I take it. Uh, it's not a river. There's a, there's a little lake, lake over there. Yeah. Okay. Pond. Pond. I don't know how you want to refer to it. Pond. Yes. Mr. Lane had his hand up. The thing he was circling was not actually another house. That's a whole barn. For the barn in, in front of another house. Right. right? I, I measured. I measured to the house, not the barn. Oh, okay. Just for the record, I did measure to the house. <laughs> by the and that was by way the crow flies. <laughs> and so the pictures that are on page eighteen. Oh, I gotta look at the packet. Oh yeah. Page 18 of the packet. Thank you, Brian, for the clarification. Okay, yep. That's from their driveway. And that is looking facing east up the slope. Yes, so the building would be in the middle of that woods. So you, you probably wouldn't even be able to see it from the private drive, correct? No. Yeah, it's, no. it's fairly Not dense. Even with the leaves off. Okay. So I believe Mr. Nordyke made a motion yeah. to approve with conditions. Yes, I did. Let me let me give you the formal motion. Not to lead you at all. No, no, no. All right. Craig, are you good? I'm good. All right. Well, I'm not good, but I'm okay. <laughs> Is it acceptable? Yes. <laughs> okay. I will make a motion in case number 21-3659 Lang uh, that the planning or to approve the uh, request with the conditions cited by staff for not using it to live, uh, for living space or to run a business, and any outdoor lighting meets our regulations. Thank you, Member Kersich, for the support. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You're all set. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. 10 months in the making. <laughs> Congratulations Good. for 14 minutes. <laughs> Proud okay. owner of a pole barn. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right, moving on to Article 8, case number 21 3664, Eggleston 9091 36th Street. Hopefully, they leave just as happy. Uh, <laughs> But it can't make any promises. OK, uh, this one is on 36th Street. So we're moving just a little south. Brian, what do you got? Yep, yeah, on 36th Street east of Quiggle. This one's also 30 by 40 with a 40 by 12 lean to, so 1,680 feet, slightly larger. Uh, it'll have a height of 17 feet, measured to the midpoint, requiring a setback of 40 feet to the side and rear property lines. And they're showing a setback of 98 feet to the near side property line. And that setback to the rear will be like approximately over 500 feet. The applicant has recently had a lot split application approved, um, moving from three parcels to two parcels. Uh, the one that their home is located on will create a nine acre lot that the building will be on. Um, the applicant will still need to record the required documents for that last bit, lot split before a building permit can be issued. Uh, the property is permitted to have three accessory buildings with that size. This will be the third building on there. They indicated they plan to use the building for storage of an RV and pop up camper. Um, the building of steel roofing and siding, and then the size of the building is once again normal for the lot size and zoning district that it's in. Uh, so once again, the applicant appears to meet our standards for an accessory building. So we're recommending approval with three following conditions, along with being in compliance with our other zoning regulations, that the building is not used for living space or to run a business, that any outdoor lighting meets our regulations, and then before a building permit is issued, the required documents for the lot split must be recorded with the county. Thank you, Brian. Any uh, questions? Yes. Um, 
you talked about it being a lot split. It is a lot combination then of that 37. Yeah, it would be a, a boundary line adjustment with a combination as well, going from three lots to two lots. Go back to your earlier picture, if you would, please. That one shows two lots side by side. So those show the existing as it as it currently is. 37B and whatever else the other one is. Yeah. So yeah, those two will be combined. So that property line going to the middle of those will no longer be there then. But the next picture shows it going deeply. I think it's just the perspective of the two pictures. The lots are extremely deep. And, they are, yes. And so to give you perspective on where the septic and the buildings are, this particular perspective is zoomed in closer because you don't need to see all of the land to the north. That's correct. But it's just woods. So both parcels go all the way back through what will become parcel A and parcel B. No, parcel A, the one where the home and buildings are on, are this front one here. Right, but both thirty, but both of the two parcels that are shown on the earlier picture. Like I said, this is just the existing property line, so that'll no longer be there. I know. So this is just one property. But right now, it is one long, or it is three pieces Correct. here, here, and here. Yes. Correct. Correct. It's almost so, a half mile long. So that now B and the house parcel will be combined. But then is there a jag in before it goes deeper? No, it'll be basically just two clean rectangles here. One in the front and one in the back. So that parcel 37B also goes all the way deep currently. Not currently, that's why it's a boundary line reconfiguration. Only one goes all the way back and then there's two um, there. adjacent to it. So only one existing one goes all the way back. Then, but your N parcel on page 36 of our packet shows one parcel or two parcels going vertically all the way back one parcel in front of the other. Which page is that? I don't have. The next one out after this that you showed. Hey, Brian. Yeah. A point of order. Yeah. Um, I think that could be served. Can we start numbering the pages in these packets? We can in the you mean bottom corner or something. Uh -huh. Sure. So why don't we say it's in page 36? <laughs> mm -hmm. you can I, okay, so well, basically yeah. what they've done is they've made the parcel, the frontage at the street is one parcel, and then there's quite a ways back uh, is the second parcel behind it. Is that, that is, that is what I'm reading here. So, yeah, only one resultant parcel has frontage along 36th correct. Street. One has frontage along the road, and then the existing parcel that used to be in the back that didn't have frontage on the road is just wider than it used to be. But it, But the one... That one doesn't show it getting wider. Well, this drawing does. The one I'm looking at, I'm looking at page 36, and it shows it exactly what they what the what they talked the, about. The front of it getting wider. Well, yeah. you said that the house sits midway back. Correct. And this now has two parcels side by side. Well, no, it used to be two parcels side by side. Well, it as of right now, I guess. Well, yeah, I guess it technically it's right. <laughs> um, but the page 36 shows a straight line, essentially almost due north. Um, I guess I'm not, I'm not quite. Where is the extra right? lot? In the back. Where? I know the B is in the back of A, right? But I'm looking for but where 37B. Right? No, 
A and B are, are just a second. See if we can make this slow down. So right here, okay. This was C, this was A, and B was here. C went all the way back to the back of B. All they did is they took out this line and made this all A and then took out the line between B and C and made that all B. So this is B and this is A. There used to be a line here right in the middle and the, line, the lot on the left went all of the way. No, that actually makes sense. Well, it, it's, it does explain it, yes. If, if uh, Stephanie, how do I share my screen so that I can show people what I just explained? I think it looks number 37. Page 37. I don't like the way that looked. But doesn't it show the whole thing together? Page 37? Yeah. Uh, not on mine, that doesn't. No, mine. 37 zoomed into where the proposed building. But if be. I, if I. Um... Mr. Chairman, there's a toggle switch underneath your desk that should allow you to share your screen. To share my screen? Yes, sir. That means you have to be careful. Is that the input? Yeah, I thought last time I was told to. Push something up here. The telephone. <laughs> Not the telephone. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> um, well, what do I what do I push to scare, share my screen? I have two buttons, inputs one and two, just like everybody else. See, I know I know Steve explained to me how to do this once. And if I could, oh, I, I wonder if it's this one. I think that's the whiteboard. Oh, yeah, that was bad. Oh, uh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> Here, I got this. So you should be able to. Well, that just switches my screen from up there to down here. There's a way, there's a way to do it to share my screen. I've done it before. I just, I'm sorry to have raised this. I just view my map reading skills as quite good, and this one confused. Is it the picture? Anybody? Anybody have a guess? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the snowflake. I think you just took a picture. I just took a picture. Okay. Well. We can figure out this technology another time. We don't need to hold these folks up. Um, I think we, uh, I, I, Mr. Member Merlin, are, are you are, are you comfortable that? I'm never comfortable these days. Are you comfortable for us to move forward? Yes. I, I mean, do you have a concern here or no? Okay, I then. Understand, I would love to have, when we have presentations, to have the maps sort of in sync with one another. Sure. So that you can go from one to the other without confusing even those of us uh, who pride ourselves and, on our maps. And I, skills. I cheat by looking at the online mapping software, which is what I was going to try to, sh to share because it shows the lines as they currently are. And it really helps put in perspective what happened. But I, I uh, lack the uh, memory of how to do that. And uh, Apparently, I need more training. Even, at, your, even at your age. Even at my age, I need more training on that. So we'll work on that. That's a separate issue. Uh, in the meantime. Can I uh, ask one further question, though? I, yes, please. At the bottom of 37B, on page 35, it looks like there is water. Hmm. OK, on page 35. Where it had the. Oh, it was heavy rain that day. According to the key, the key on that picture says that that is their well. Oh, no. Oh, you're saying on the bottom left? Bottom left. That, yeah, that's not a well. Oh, yeah, that probably is actual uh, little pond area. Uh, yep, that's what that is. I can see it in the aerial image. There's a little, there's a little water there. Yeah. But I, I am I, not trying to make life difficult for you. <laughs> All right. Then at this time, I would uh, I, I ask if the have a question applicant of, has of staff. Okay. If I could. Yes. Um, would they be in compliance if they didn't make the changes to the lots? They wouldn't be able to because that accessory building would be on a different parcel than the home. So that's part of the reason why this lot split all occurred. So this is actually bringing them more into compliance, even without Correct. building the building. Correct. It brings them yes. more compliant. Yeah. And even though you call it a lot split, it's actually a lot consolidation and resplit. 
Yeah, lot, lot line reconfiguration. Yeah, lot split, that's the approval. We have a lot split one, but you're correct. It'd be a kind of reconfiguration and combination. Okay. Uh, any other questions of staff before I ask the applicant? If I thought you said they have to complete that though before this could be officially. Yeah, it was approved by our office and the deeds just need to be recorded with the county now. And so the combination and splits of lots do not have to come to the planning commission. No, those are just administrative. Yeah, are meeting our requirements. Meet the requirements and don't need any. Yeah, yeah, correct. Minor. Okay, uh, I, I'm afraid to ask this, but does the applicant want to add anything? <laughs> okay, I think that's a safe answer. <laughs> You're welcome to if, if, if you think we need more, but uh, I think we've got to sort it out. So does anybody have any questions of the applicant at this time? No? Okay. Uh, while they're sitting on the edge of their seat still, uh, I would ask for a motion to go to public hearing. Make a motion to go to public hearing. Thank you, Member Nordic. Do we have support? Thank you, Member Nordic Hook. Uh, all those in favor to go to public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I'm don't see anybody in the audience that would like to speak, but if there's anybody online uh, would like to raise their hand electronically or press star nine if they're on a telephone, uh, we'll get you connected. There are no raised hands, Mr. Chairman. Understood. I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Steve, I'm assuming you didn't get any, or Steve, Brian, <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to get that one right. Uh, I'm assuming you didn't get any uh, communication from public. I did not, no. Okay. Make a motion to leave the public hearing. Thank you, Member Nordic. Thank you, Member Nordic, for the uh, support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Does anybody uh, have any further discussion or wish to take a stab at this? I'll make a motion uh, for case number 21-3664 uh, that we uh, approve the application and that uh, it, it has the following recommendation or following requirements that the building is not used for living space or to run a business. Any outdoor lighting meets our regulations. And before our building permit uh, is issued, the required documents for the lot split and or combination thereof must be recorded. Support. Very thorough. Thank you, Member Nordeg, for the uh, motion and the support, Member Deering. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Have a good evening. I miss something? Craig was giving me a weird Thanks. Thanks. We good? I'm fine. Okay. Uh, with that, we will move on to Article 9, which is old business. Uh, Thornapple Point Stormwater. Brian, I'm assuming you have a bit of an update for us, or did you want me to read the update? I can read it. I mean, I guess we all read it, right? It's yeah. in the packet. Yeah. So, yeah, in your packet, uh, there is some this, communication. This, does anybody have any questions to Brian of the communication that was in the packet? <laughs> it looked pretty thorough to me. Uh, Timmy, I think it looked exactly pretty much exactly what you and I identified when we were there, plus there's some other things. So I thought that was pretty good. Has the homeowner down in Sequoia been? They haven't been home. I tried to okay. let them know that things were in the works and uh, uh, their blinds are eyes closed. They must be at a second home, but I'll try again. Cottage on Lake Michigan? That's my guess. It could be. I yeah. I, I've had a pretty good relationship with them, but you know. Uh, I thought I did. Lot um, six sold. Or is it still owned by the developer? Uh, but you know, I don't know the, the status of that. I I I don't know. I could find because out. Because there are gonna be swales know. put in there, so presumably the developer's still yeah, I would assume the developer's still working on it. Well, he might have I, should solve the problem. Yeah, I don't even. And didn't we see the drain sitting on a hill? I don't know what you saw because I wasn't with you. <laughs> <laughs> Trust uh, me, Nord. Look. That's the one that had the uh, possum taking a nap in it. Yes, that's the one that they're correcting. And lot six I, is that one in the back, which looking at a plat map, it still shows it owned as uh, by the developer. But I think that's the, I saw that possum down there. So I know what you're referring to. And so that was still sitting high 
Yes, in the notes that are in the packet, it said they were going to regrade that area so that it would be gradually getting higher. Well, I think they're moving the dirt from the, if I read this right, I think it was from the west into that area so that the water flows to the catch basin, basin. instead of into the woods. Yeah, or I think they're putting a berm behind it they're as putting well. putting a berm in the back. Oh, the berm behind it, yes. But, okay, and so it, they it, are, they're grading in front of it too. Well, they must be because they said that the, that the water in the thing, it says that they're going to send the water to the catch basin. So they would have to raise the area that's lowered around the catch basin for that to happen. You would think, but I tend not to take things for granted. Um, they staked a swale along the east side of lot six to capture runoff from lot six. They staked for a berm around the east to the northeast side of the cul-de-sac. That I understood. A lot too is a different issue. To get the catch, to get the water, yeah, they're gonna, it says the proposed swale along the east side of lot six had grade to get to the catch basins. So that tells me that they changed the grade so that the water could get to the catch basins. To direct water to the catch basins. That small swale, the swale should extend the length of the east line and part of the south line of that lot. So any other questions on that? I would have loved to have had two grade to get into the catch basin rather well, than two, but one could argue that was implicit. But if it doesn't make it there, I think the next time somebody's out there, they're gonna see a pond. <laughs> Yeah, and then that'll around that'll, with the berm and closing that, it. That'll raise another question if that happens. But I'm I would think that the people that are out there doing this understand what the point is, and they'll get the the grades correct hopefully. Um, well, moving, I would when and they're supposed to get it done this fall. I believe it said that in the memo. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure the exact date, so I'm not going to quote it. But because I remember the gentleman saying he was leaving for the Southland for the winter. There's a line that says the last we spoke with Adam, it sounded like the contractor would be on site this month to complete the work. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. And so we should, so someone from the township should just go and double check that that is done because no one will be at the house over the property over which that water flows. Yeah, we'll be able to look at that with our engineer and confirm that everything was done like they were expecting it to be. And so you will put it on your checklist to have Fishbeck go back out and double check or? Yeah, I would think Mike would do that automatically, wouldn't he? Or I would think so, but yeah, I'll talk with him in sometime early October. And Can you give us a status go. at the end of October? Sure. Thank you. Okay. On our list of on our punch list. I worked on that a little bit this morning, actually. Good. All right. Safety measures at the Wisner Center is the second item I see here, uh, which I looked at, and uh, that looked very uh, cut and dry to me. Uh, it looked very unsatisfactory to me. But Well, if the people that are handling our risk are comfortable with it, I guess I'm comfortable with it. So, well... You and I have different standards of that, Ben, because I'm probably I would prefer not to have to pay insurance for a child falling off that hill um, rather than. And so the question when I looked at her pictures, it. Well, Ralph, you went there today or you were going to. Did, it, did I hear that, that that slope got filled in, though, from the time that it was really bad and raised everybody's eyebrows? My understanding was that Phil... 45. Okay, but it's not it's not the straight cliff that it was before. Yeah, it was steeper, okay. actually, at one time. They put in erosion control mats. They put in trees. Uh, if you're comfortable with it, that because I'm comfortable you got behind the, this layer of shrubbery that... Our risk. I did not walk along the top of the hill. 
I walk, I primarily went over to look at the retaining wall and to see if the water was coming through the wall. That was my primary goal today. Okay. All right. Uh, and with that, I would uh, move to Article 10, which is any other business. Yes, Member Nordyke. Uh, Member Chairman and the rest of uh, the Planning Commission, um, Director Peterson uh, has left Cascade Township after uh, 24 years. And traditionally, uh, we have drafted a resolution when somebody has uh, served an extended amount of time. I drafted something, I'm gonna pass this around. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, um, that I'd like to read. Yeah, right. uh, I'll pass it. Thank you. I'm not doing anything. And um, I, I also, uh, with assistance from the, the chairman, so he's had his eyes yesterday. All right, uh, resolution two of 21, uh, Cascade Charter Township, whereas Steve Peterson has served with Cascade Char Charter Township staff for 24 years, and whereas Stephen Peterson has served uh, the Planning Commission and ZBA during this time in many ways, including his detailed, accurate, and well-explained staff reports for committee members. And whereas Steve Peterson has contributed to countless committees with valuable input and creative ideas that have benefited Cascade Township in many ways and will continue to do so long into the future. And whereas Steve Peterson has been associated with good and responsible service to his community and has showed he was prepared, informed, and provided sound advice to the Planning Commission at meetings. And therefore, it be it resolved, the Cascade Charter Township Planning Commission hereby gives its heartfelt appreciation to Steve for his service to this community. So I ask that uh, the Planning Commission consider this and uh, potentially adopt it uh, as a resolution and we could present um, Steve uh, a plaque. And again, we did this for Jack Lewis and I think we've done it. Done it for Steve Walks, I think. Yeah, for a few uh, others. So anybody who's you know kind of put in the 20 plus years, um, something that, that we have done. Uh, so again, it's just a draft and I'll leave it to Is that the an official motion? Yeah, I, I, I will make the motion, uh, but I didn't know if anybody had any uh, thoughts or uh, questions on it before I do make the motion. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add? Yeah. I'd just like to say thank you for putting this together. I think it's, you know, we Steve should be recognized for the service that he gave the township for 24 years. It's a long time. So thank you for doing that. And I make and I support your motion. Okay. All right. Member Merlin. I must say in my interactions with Mr. Peterson, over a number of years before I got on this commission and afterward, I could not support this motion. I feel the same way based on my interaction with him prior to being on this committee. So I feel like I'm new where I feel like I can step back because I feel like I have not, I was here probably less than three or four months with him. So I feel like I should abstain from this just because of personal interactions. Which is I what have. I'm gonna do, abstain. So right. those that have served with him, more power to you. I just feel personally on a personal, as a citizen of the township, I had horrible interactions, so. Sorry to hear that. As I, have I. I, I did <laughs> not. <laughs> as have I. So he, he, Steve knew a lot about his own business. He had a lot of knowledge in planning, zoning. Mm -hmm. I don't dispute that. My problem was how he treated citizens in the process of that. That was a, that was a problem for me. And I have experienced that firsthand mm -hmm. a couple of times myself. So, but I don't dispute that his knowledge in planning and zoning. And that's what this says. So yeah, is there anything in here? Planning that, and zoning. I don't think there's anything in here that I'm you just not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with creative ideas that have benefited Cascade Township in many ways and will continue to do so. All right. Well, we have a motion on the table. I'll formally make the motion to draft to uh, not draft you, or accept you, the resolution. You did, and yeah. I believe Member Deering supported it. So uh, and it's a resolution, so we have to do a roll call vote. So uh, 
I guess I'll. Brian, can you? Do that? Brian, you want to do that? Just start at the end and work your way down. Yeah. <clears throat> Member Norhook. Uh, no. Member Moxley. No. Member Deering. Yes. Member Nordyke. Yes. Member Reese. Yes. Member Corstange. No. Member Merlin. No. Okay. Um, well, I would just like to say that uh, I didn't share in that experience with Steve at all. And uh, I, uh, I think he, well, I know he already is being missed because we had some glitches tonight that he could have helped us with, but we'll work, uh, we'll work through those over time. I'm sure we're going to see more of them. And uh, hopefully I don't refer to Brian as Steve too many more times. Um, <laughs> But uh, it'll probably happen, so I'll apologize in advance, Brian. But I've uh, been looking in that direction for a number of years now, and yeah, um, I'm still learning as uh, as we go. Any other business that anybody wishes to bring up? I have one. Yes. Just I think that when we're because this is a public forum, I think that we need to be careful when we talk about people that are leaving for the winter. Um, we right. all are in a safe community, we feel, mm -hmm. but that's one of the reasons why I made that comment is I think it's inappropriate in a public setting, even when some of us are on vacation and it is noted during these meetings, oh, they're gone because they said they'd be out of town this week. I think those things are inappropriate to say in a public situation like this, not knowing who could be listening. I think we're all safe. I think we all trust each other, but I just, I think it sets certain homeowners up for a situation that is not a safe situation. And I think that we just need to say they're not available or something. Sure. No, uh, you make a good point there, Member Karstage. I, I'm still trying to adjust to the whole reality that people could be watching this on Zoom, and I don't think of that a lot. So uh, I'll try to get into that mindset of, of that, that's good advice. Really with me, and I was just trying to give an out to say, oh, About maybe when? they just, just when I said they, maybe they didn't want to answer the door to you when you knocked. Oh, I was, I was just, joking. No, I know, but I'm just I, saying, yeah. we okay. need to, right. we need to not. No, you, you make a good point there. Yes, it's, it's, it's very scary right. to think that somebody could know addresses. We're talking addresses well. We didn't talk about who they were or where they live, no, so that's be, good. It'd be very but yeah, easy to find it. he sat up and spoke publicly and gave his address. Right. Right. Okay. So I well, do think we need to be safe and be minded about people and respect their privacy. No, I I, I agree. I think that's a good that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that perspective. So you make you make a good point. Yes, Member Merlin. The, uh, to follow up with her point, and I apologize for having done it once myself tonight, um, saying someone was gone. Um, there was a post up on next door today about um, tagging people's houses. Um, and if things were not found the next day, that people that potential burglars or otherwise could, uh, and this was somebody on Thornapple River Drive. Um, so it is, we don't necessarily live in as safe a community as we might once have thought we did, unfortunately. Right. And mm -hmm. the car burglars that are going on now, burglaries can very easily turn into something more. One of the one of the things the the front or next door, I guess, is not front door; it's next door. Uh, mentioned was not only having someone come by and check the inside of the house, but check the outside of the house. For example, people leave um, dollar bills and whatnot under tires or next to a car. And if it's not picked up in a day, they figure someone wasn't there or they leave an outdoor faucet running. It's things that I would never have thought of before. Um, okay. Interesting. All right. Any other business? And by the way, I gave that note to town manager Swayze, who was going to share it with the. I, I saw you passed him a note and said something about that, but I didn't know what in context it was, but it all comes together now. <laughs> Any other uh, comments? Business? Thoughts? Motion to adjourn? Some
Thank you for uh, the emotion. Uh, I'm going to go with Member Nordhuk because he waved before you said that. So we'll give you the support on that, Member Deering. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Good night.